It's a time of much subterfuge in India-Pakistan matters and Pakistan is keeping up with its strategy of keeping the topic hot. India has rejected a Pakistani claim that its submarine entered Pakistani waters. The Indian government sources say a picture released by the Pakistani Navy is that of an Indian submarine from November 18, 2016, which means that Pakistan is showing a two-year-old picture to peddle its propaganda. The Pakistani plan, say sources, is to keep up the fear psychosis and divert attention from the focus on terror. Earlier, the Pakistani Navy released this picture claiming that it was that of an Indian submarine in its maritime zone. The Navy claimed it had thwarted the submarine from entering its waters. In fact, Pakistan said that it was the second attempt since November 2016 by an Indian submarine to enter Pakistani waters. The Navy claimed it had warned and pushed back the Indian submarine. I think that Pakistan has uh, an imagination which is impressive and uh, um, also a set of statements that come out from, you know, there's an old saying, first uh, put brain in gear before engaging mouth. I think that might not be a bad sort of advice to follow at the very moment. If Pakistan is of the belief that we have uh, submarines operating in their waters and that our submarines are as indiscreet as uh, they seem to think, then I think that Pakistan seriously underestimates the Indian Navy. Uh, A, we do not have submarines operating in Pakistani waters. A, if we did, and if we have submarines operating anywhere else, then I do not think that Pakistan has the ability to actually figure this out, much less ask them to leave. What Pakistan does have the ability to do is to release badly doctored videos. Mm -hmm. That they have. So is that a good enough sort of capability? Uh, personally, I think that there might be one or two capabilities that you might wish to develop, which is more than that. So uh, my short answer is, uh, I think it's, a, it's just balderdash. Pakistan, after the Pulwama attack and what happened in Balakot, and now a drone having been drowned, is on the back foot. It has to tell its people that its armed forces, the Air Force, the Army, and the Navy are actually in good shape. So they send out information and media and hype. So now they claim that they have brushed away an Indian Navy submarine which went in towards Pakistan. Freedom of the seas allows you to take the submarine anywhere up to 12 kilometers. 12 miles as per the laws of the sea. However, whenever you have a submarine and you feel that it is there, you can drop from a ship three grenades and ask it to come up. So this footage may not be entirely true, but for Pakistan, it is very, very important in the psychological warfare to bring up the morale of their own people and say, here our armed forces are ready for whatever eventuality, and we must look at it at that way. Experts will be able to make out that video is an old video from a movie like Ghazi or somewhere on the internet. Or Indian Navy has made videos. Tropex exercise was going on and which was put on pause after full baba. Right, let's move on from South Asia now to Venezuela where the opposition leader Juan Guaido received a hero's welcome as he turned to a return to Caracas after a tour of South American nations. He was met by crowds of supporters and numerous European diplomats after he landed at the Caracas airport. The 35-year-old leader said that the country was soon going to achieve the end of usurpation and that despite the risks, the people will not stop. He called for protests against uh, Nicolas Maduro and said that the opposition will be quote-unquote going with much more force to the streets on Venezuela. en la calle, seguimos movilizados y aquí estamos dando la cara por nuestra gente luego una exitosísima gira internacional de reconocimiento del planeta Tierra, de la ayuda humanitaria necesaria para nuestra gente, ese debe ser claramente el mensaje en este momento estamos aquí Venezuela, estamos fuertes 
Guaido's tour of the Latin American nations was aimed at boosting support for his campaign to oust Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. At least 50 countries support him, but his return could be a potential flashpoint in the country. He flouted a court-imposed travel ban last week when he crossed into Colombia to coordinate efforts to send humanitarian aid into Venezuela. Some experts say that there is a possibility that President Nicolas Maduro's government could arrest Guaido. This could allow the opposition to highlight, highlight how the Maduro government represses political rivals. Even before his arrival in Caracas, Guaido warned Maduro that should anything happen to him, then it would be the last mistake that Maduro makes. That warning was backed by the United States. The U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton tweeted that a threat to Guaido's return will be met with a strong and significant response from the United States and the international community. After Guaido's return, Bolton tweeted again to say, quote, The United States fully supports Guaido and the National Assembly. His uh, safety must be guaranteed. The world is watching. End quote. The American actor Luke Perry has died in California at the age of 52, less than a week after suffering a massive stroke. The actor, who rose to superstardom on the teen-oriented 1990s U.S. television drama Beverly Hills 90210, and then aged into a fatherly role on comic-based Riverdale, was admitted in hospital last Wednesday. His publicist, Arnold Robinson, informed the media that uh, the actor died in a Los Angeles area hospital surrounded by his family and close friends, including his former wife, Minnie Sharp, his two children, and his fiance Wendy Madison Bauer. The family has not provided additional details at this time. Online, many of uh, Perry's fans expressed their grief and shock. His fellow Riverdale co-star Molly Ringwald said, and I quote, my heart is broken, while the Riverdale creator Roberto Aguirre Sacasa described Perry as a father, a brother, a friend and a mentor. Ian Ziering, Perry's 90210 co-star, thanked him for enriching the lives of so many. Meanwhile, celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio, Charlie Sheen, Ben Stiller, Viola Davis and U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown also took to Twitter to pay their respects to the star.